I'm Greg Vandy, KXP, streaming around the world at kxp.org. It's great to have Reed Turchy in the Roadhouse. And it's great to be here. Churchy from his brand new record called Tallahatchie. Great to have you here, Reed. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thanks for bringing me in here. This place is amazing. Yeah, it's good, good to have you here. You were at the sunset last night. I was. How'd that go? I saw some pictures on social networks, and it seemed sort of like a little intimate affair. It was a little intimate affair. Uh, Mike Wall, Michael Wall, who I believe you know, Yeah. Uh, we did the show together with a guy named Reagan Crow starting it off, and... I really like that room, and so we had everybody come up on the stage. It was the right number of people, and it seems like, you know, in a left-minded city like this, you can get away with that kind of thing. 
So we just played acoustic. It seemed kind of funny to be uh, set up with mics and monitors and everything to play just acoustic. So as yeah. much as possible, it's been fun to do it. In yeah. a minute. But then I spent most of the night, you know, on the side of MLK with a tire missing on the car waiting for AAA. So yeah. it was an exciting night. The life of a touring musician. Mm. Rough. Mm. You guys sang uh, some Lead Belly songs, I guess, last night from what I heard. Yeah, we closed it out with In the Pines, which is, of course, Lead Belly song. I didn't know if I was allowed to acknowledge it, but also, of course, it was cool for me to play that here as a Nirvana tune and as a Seattle connection. But yeah, that's on his Windbone Blues album. Right on, yeah. So uh, this record is a bit of a departure from your first uh, debut sort of solo record. You were recording under the name Churchy for a while, which is more of a band kind of thing. And then Speaking in Shadows, which I played a little bit when it came out, and then this is a total departure. Mm. What happened there? Um, well, I, for uh, about four years, I was spending a lot of time working and working musically in Ardent Studios in Memphis and, uh, you know, enjoyed making albums with a lot of sonic parts. Um, and then through a series of things, band personnel changing, you know, touring conditions changing, uh, Musically, I wanted to get back to this stuff, which these sort of batch of songs and style, which is what got me excited to play guitar in the first place. And then the real pivotal moment was back in October, uh, the final version of the band, final as in the last, not as in the penultimate, uh, <laughs> we're touring through. And we visited my grandmother in the hospital who was clearly on her way out. Um, and we're sitting there with her, which was lucky that the tour went through Baltimore. And she asked if we could just sing songs with her, which she's a pretty, she was a pretty shy lady. And so she never asked me anything like that. And it was kind of a painful moment because I realized that all the songs that I was out playing with the band and that were on the album were all songs that, you know, it was like, oh, well, ah, this won't really sound right because we're missing the X and X overdub or, oh, well, you know, it's like has kind of the thing. It sounds cool on the record, but it's hard to like, you know, sit here and sing. And so she died about 48 hours after that, um, but it was maybe the most crystallized moment of, I just want to get back to playing guitar for someone in a room and being able to do that well. Mm -hmm. And then wherever we go from here, you know, if a couple of years from now I've got a 19 piece band, well, I'll be paying a lot of money to keep them on the road, but also <laughs> it will have come from this point. Yeah. It's a bit more of an intimate experience, I suppose, with just you and the guitar and the audience, you know, it's more direct. Yeah, it's made me get a lot better as a musician, a lot faster, and I've enjoyed the shows more than any other shows. There's no grabbing people's attention just through volume. It's about getting the songs across. Yeah, you sound great. You're a great guitar player. Well, How did you first get into this whole Hill Country thing? Uh, well, I grew up playing... I grew up taking piano lessons sort of by force of my mother, who's the real musician, a classical violist. And it was so bad. I would practice piano with headphones in listening to other stuff. And she finally figured out what was going on. And that was a, that was a bad night. Uh, but uh, sometime around when I started at UNC Chapel Hill, um, I started to discover Hill Country Blues, North Mississippi Blues, and got to work with a guy who's become a lifelong mentor, Bill Ferris, who pointed me pretty directly into where I needed to go. And then once I got interested in that slide world, which started with Mississippi Fred McDowell, uh, I couldn't do it on piano. And then and that was, that was the jumping off point. There was no more piano, because I was still playing a piano a lot then. Uh, but then there was no turning back. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you did. <laughs> Let's hear another song. This is uh, Jumper on the Line. This is Reed Kirchie playing from his new album. It's called Tallahatchie. It's on Devil Down Records. It's great to have him in the Roadhouse on KEXP. All right, let's get this sucker over here. I'm my back. Now I just smash it straight down. All right. So much for the slide guitar. Let's see if this works. Here we go.
See my jumper, baby, hanging out on the line. See my jumper, baby, hanging out on the line. Ain't nobody there, something on my mind. Reed Turchi, jumper on the line. He's in the Roadhouse. Great to have you here, Reed. Still good to be here in the Sounds Roadhouse. Great. Hey, uh, these are mostly all old songs and traditional songs that you picked uh, for this record. Yeah. How did you go about picking the songs? Uh, these are all tunes in one way or another out of the sort of hill country blues, North Mississippi hill country blues canon. And that's, like we were talking about, that's the music that first yanked me out of piano world and into this obsession that's been running for a while now. And uh, these are the first songs I ever learned on guitar. And in trying to get to the stuff that I really wanted to do and figure out how to go back to go forward, uh, it was so obvious. You know, these are all songs that I've known the whole time that I've been playing guitar. And either out of embarrassment 
uh, because they are so strongly in that canon or just, you know, trying to distance myself from the obsession in a weird way or like not quite acknowledge it. I avoided them and, or avoided recording them. And yeah, I mean, I sat in my bedroom and recorded this album in two days and it's my favorite album I've made. <laughs> yeah. You know, R.L. Burnside did a lot of these songs. I think that might've been a jumping off point for you for your introduction to some of the songs. Yeah, I love his acoustic albums and I love his rhythms. Uh, you know, the electric stuff is a lot of fun, but I love the rhythms he makes just with the acoustic guitar and... Uh, you know, the, some of the similarities for me, and you guys just had him here, which is blowing my little mind. You guys just had Tanarwin up here, um, and there's a similar sort of circular movement in this Hill Country Blues, because there's no chord changes. You know, there's none of the like, dun 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 It just goes in a circle, and uh, I love that as a trance, and I'm drawn to that rhythm as much as I am other sounds. Now, you're in Nashville now. I think you moved there recently, but you were in Memphis working at Arden Studios. Yeah. And then you're from North Carolina. What's How's that work? I grew up, yeah, I grew up in Swannanoa, North Carolina, which is just outside of Asheville. And uh, then when Arden had me come on board and I started, I started spending a lot of time in North Mississippi making, uh, making albums with these guys that I love, which is another part of this obsession. And through that and through the Dickinson family, um, the bridge there is the North Mississippi All-Stars, Luther and Cody Dickinson, their mother, Mary Lindsay Dickinson, and then her husband, their father, Jim Dickinson, who was the producer at Ardent Forever, did right. Big Stars Third, among other things. Uh, so that was my bridge into Ardent Land, and I spent a lot of time in Memphis there. That situation changed, and then, yeah, I've uh, almost made the intergalactic but only a 200 mile journey from Memphis to Nashville and I'll be based there as much as I'm based anywhere starting here in a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it sounds good. And tell me about some of your aesthetics when you were making records for other people when you were at Art and Producing and uh, what, are some of your, what are some of your sounds that you like to go for? I've always loved having recordings that are in a context or that seem to capture more than just like the produced sound. Um, and it turns out that's one of my dad's big preferences too. So I don't know if that's nature or nurture or a combination, but I've always been drawn to stuff that, you know, the snippet of conversation before the, before the song starts or things like that. And especially with like the blues piano stuff, it, for me, the context of how the music is made is a huge part of its sort of power. And so when I was spending a lot of time in North Mississippi, all those albums I made with a much simpler mic setup than what we have here now. Uh, and I love the way those albums sound. Uh, it was a big challenge for me then to work in a studio to try to make albums that reflected that because I like things that are kind of loose and informal and fall together. Uh, which is, you know, one of my favorite is I did our album with this guy, uh, Little Joe Ayers, who was the bass player for Junior Kimbrough forever and plays a lot of that. And there was a cat stuck in a tree about 50 feet from us the whole time. And so in between all the songs you hear, I'm like, you know, man, someone's got to get that cat out of that tree. You know, like between, and uh, stuff like that, Stan, I mean, that stuff is special to me. And so this new record of mine, Tallahatchie, is the first time I ever used that aesthetic on myself. And again, kind of an obvious thing, but something I had missed. Yeah. I, I imagine you're familiar with uh, Robert Palmer's Deep Blues, yeah. the doc and then the book. Yeah, I am not deeply, but the footage and, uh, I mean, that's some of the holy grail of footage yeah. of those guys. Yeah. Tallahatchie is a river. It is. And is that what the album's named after? Yeah, the Tallahatchie River is one of the main bodies of water that runs through North Mississippi and Tate County in that area. Uh, and I grew up by the Swannanoa River and like a lot of people, uh, find rivers to be sort of telling culturally and musically. Um, and so I just wanted to give a full, not just nod, but full credit to what these songs are and where they came from yeah. and yeah. just as straight as can be. And me and Bobby McGee, right? Tallahatchie Bridge. Yeah. Also, you know, we shouldn't dive off this end of the spectrum too far, but also the river Emmett Till was thrown into. Right. So... Yeah you know, you have the most mixed art mm -hmm. and horror uh, 
everywhere now. But yeah, you know, that's you know we side. first came into contact when the, your band Churchy, which of course is your name, but it was more of a band concept, and me yeah. thinking that was a band, but it really wasn't. It was just you, uh, as right? A band. And some of the guys. And uh, you know, the album cover is one of those submissions I got. Like, what is this? And I gotta say, the album cover caught my attention with uh, that sort of had a sort of a deep southern sort of look to it, and then the sound was a a bit of a deep sort of thing too. It was kind of a swampy thing. Yeah, it was me and a uh, drummer named Cameron Weeks, uh, who's pretty heavy-handed but loves this stuff and is a good guy. And then a bass player named Andrew Hamlet, who uh, might have been here years ago with a band called Pressed And, but kind of a psychedelic guy. And <laughs> those two didn't really get along, but the music worked really well. And the photo you're talking about was just out of my bedroom window when I moved back to Asheville for about five months. Yeah. Needs some attending in that garden, I think. Uh, that wasn't my garden. That was the neighbor. That was the neighbor's <laughs> truck. I think that's like a craft home good artisanal biscuit kitchen yeah. now. So that another lost landscape. Well, we could talk forever, but could. how about a third song? All right. Well, I'm going to retune here. This is Reed Turchie. He's in the Roadhouse. The album is Tallahatchie. It's on Devil Down Records. It's a new record, and it's an all slide guitar record featuring a lot of old songs. Like this next, next one is, uh, what is this next one? This next one is also from the Birdside Canon. It's called Long Haired Dhoni. <laughs> Session also features squeaky stool, and I know you're into that sort of the sort of aesthetics. How does a guitar go in and out of tune after one song? Well, this is in different tuning. Oh, I see. I'm moving into different worlds of exploratory nature. Good. I see. Mm. Good to be back.
assault me with questions while I try to play. <laughs> that would be fair. <laughs> the clipboard's gonna be looking for that fourth song release. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> fourth song. All right. Uh, well, now there's like a whole different thing. Um, okay. you in the roadhouse i'll see you in nashville yeah thanks in for September. having me we'll come do, on down yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do a meet and three at arnold's mm, maybe brother carl will join us yeah absolutely great to have you here thank you thanks for having me up here discover new music at listener powered kexp.org